Uh, howdy folks, welcome back to the garage. Today we are looking over the BK30.01P. P stands for Porsche, Dr. Porsche. Yes, the same Porsche who makes Porsche cars. Uh, he doesn't make them anymore, he's long gone, but uh, the company lives. Uh, yeah, this was his attempt at a medium tank for the German army. We'll have a good look here at uh, two replays. And after each replay, we'll do the specs, or sorry, the stats very quickly. And then we'll go to Armor Inspector and show you what the VK 30.01P looks like from its other tier 6 medium competitors and what they look from the VK's perspective so you know where to shoot everybody. Okay, why don't we get right into that first battle? Yeah, okay, let's get this battle started. So, we have uh, myself and Jen Clint 10 in our 3001P tier 6 German medium tanks. We are on Fort Despair and we are moving to the uh, east side here where there's a classic confrontation point. I see that uh, Jim Clint has the upgraded turret and the time I did this battle I did not have the upgraded turret. We are both packing the 88mm gun so far. Oh, oh, here we go. I was thinking so far we haven't seen anyone, but they are coming through now. Can't get in front there. Okay. Go with uh, Jim Clint here. Aha, uh -huh. hello T-3045. Oof. See you later, buddy. No one on our left. That's good. T-3045 is just kind of sitting there. Oh, we got there. SU-85. Yeah, he's got a pretty good gun. Okay, um, PD, nope. Alright, I'm going around this side then. John Clint's chasing him that way. I'll come around the left side of this rock, put a good one on the side of that T-3045. Oof. John Clint takes him out. Now, that SU-85 is still there. Ooh, and a 3001H. Okay, no activity here. I took a hit from that guy right there, the SU-85, but we'll put another one, boom, into the 3,000-inch. Thank you, sir, for exposing yourself. <laughs> in a manner of speaking, he's still sitting there. Boom, put another one in him. He was tracked, too, I believe. Oh, Jen Clint, you are so close to death, buddy. Kinda, you need to hide a bit. Oh, General Clint takes out. One of them, and in turn, is taken out himself. Oof, we take out the SU-85. Good riddance to you, sir. You've been a thorn in our sides. What have we got left? M6. Okay, put a good one in him. Ooh, he puts one in us. Out here, I think we're going to have to charge him. Well, let's try side scraping. We're about the same height. Ooh, he bounces one off the curve of our turret. Oh yes, we put a good one in him. He bounces another one off us. Boy, we are we are lucking out here quite well with the angles that his he's firing at, and we're sitting at. Oof, we put another good one in the back of his tank. See, his gun was kind of down the side of our turret there, probably skipped off the edge. Another bounce from him. Boom, we take him down to next to nothing. We bounce another one of his shots. This is incredible. And he is taken out by a compadre to end the battle, and that's okay with me. That was pretty stressful, I gotta say. Let's go look at some statistics. The first stat screen reveals that we have received a second class master badge. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. And without a premium account, we have received 1,634 experience points. That is doubled. We've also received a healthy gross of 33,591 credits. Mastery badges are awarded for levels of mastery in controlling an armored vehicle. And today we've got a second class mastery badge and to qualify for that a player must earn more experience in a battle than the average highest experience of 80% of players who have fought in this vehicle for the previous 7 days. Now the team stats table here reveals that we are firmly in first place with 1858 damage points dealt, 1 kill, 817 experience points and 1 award. Our next closest compadre was... In the Jackson, 1,462 damage dealt, 3 kills, 715 experience points, very nice. Now our compadre, Jen Clint 10 there, he got toasted out unfortunately, but he still dealt out 1,093 damage, picked up 2 kills, and received 576 experience points, very nice. 
And under the statistics tab of the battle results, we can see that we fired 12 shots, 9 of which did hit, and all 9 did penetrate our enemies and damage them. We have damaged 4 enemies, destroying 1. Damage caused 1,858 points. We spotted one enemy, and damage caused with our assistance was a further 135 points. We received 8 hits, 4 of those did penetrate and damage, and 4 did no damage to us at all. And under the credits tab, we can see that we received a gross of 33,591 credits. We repaired our vehicle, spending 4,841 credits to resupply the ammunition, a further 3,024 credits. And to resupply our consumables, 6,650 credits, leaving us with a nice net of 19,076 credits. And last, but certainly not least, our experience points tab, we can see here that we received 1,634 experience points and free experience. Our stack up, save them for later, buddy. 80 points. That's really good. Yeah, some good stats there. Let's move right on to the next battle. Here we go. Battle number two. We are uh, not platooned with anyone in this, this battle. We do have the upgraded turret finally, though, which is very nice. And we're following the Cromwell, who's just blasting forward. We'll attempt to keep up with him as best we can. I'm going to pop over this little ridge here. So far I see nothing. I like to come up behind this rock. Well, welcome spot. I'll still be hidden. He has not spotted anyone as of yet. Very interesting. I thought there'd be somebody here by now. Stay under this ridge as much as possible. In cover. Okay, we've got somebody down by the flag there. So far, no one in front of us. I'm going to pop over here. I hate popping over that. It's kind of a dangerous place to be. We got here KV-1S. Very nice shot into him. Yes. Get a reload here. Do something else. Oh yeah. Good shot. Good shot. So we've taken hefty amount of points off him. Okay. Cromwell finishes him. Ooh, we got over here. Churchill one, you are ripe for the picking, buddy. All right, big hit into him. He's uh, quite seen as yet. Get that real Ah, uh, see, there was his angle there. There's, we wouldn't penetrate that anyway, so I'm not going to waste the shot. Anybody else? Oh, someone's popped up on the mini map. A quick look over here. Nope, no real shot. Oh, he's poking his nose out. Boom, hit him. He spotted us. He's going to take a shot. He didn't. Like to, oh, <laughs> there we go, over the top. Oh, and poor Amy on our part, we missed that shot. Too bad. Oh, we got Tiger One over here. That is a teeny shot. Oh, and not quite, not quite accurate enough to get him there. It's a good try though. So far, one's really coming on our left. Nothing happened. Oh, oh, oh here comes that Churchill One again. Silly boy. Boom. See you later. Okay, what do we got over here? T thirty forty five. Some guys down in the valley more. That tiger not exposing himself there. All right, I'll leave him alone. T3045. Let's go over this way. M6. Yeah. Ridge T3485 is ducking down. M6 is trying to back over the hill. He's low. Boom. Got him. All right. Another gun out of the match. Cromwell's chasing after T-3045. Oh, but he's been taken out. And put one into that. Tanker, maybe? I'm not sure. Okay. Oh! Bounce one from the T-3045. That's going to cost him. I got one for you right here. Right in the front. Oof. See ya. Nope, he doesn't get another shot off. What's he going to do? Oh, he's, he's decided he's going to come and get us. And... Ooh, we do take one from him. We put one in him. At this point, uh, bam, we will ram. Why? And he turns the side of his turret to us. Thank you. I'll take that opportunity. You put a hole in it. That finishes him. What do we got left down here? It looks like a Tiger one and a Panther. Hello, Panther. Nope. Oh, we hit some wreckage instead of the Panther. Okay. Be a little more careful with our aim here. He's kind of looking this way. Boom! A good one in the rear deck of that machine. He's taking a lot of hits. He's really not in a good place right now. Bam! Another one on the side. Okay, he's made it behind some rocks. So he's going to come out. Good dash down there. Oh, maybe he's moving. Maybe he's moving. Is he coming out? Oh, maybe 
he's not. Tiger's low in health. I'd love to get that fourth kill in here. Come on, buddy, back out. Back out. No, oh, he's gone. Crap. Tiger? Solo. Ah, oh, never get there in time. I probably should have run down one of these guys sooner to try and get that fourth kill in for the Top Gun, but hey, that's okay. The Padres need kills too. That was a good battle. Let's go look at the stats. And the first stats table here shows that we've got a first class mastery badge. Very nice. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. Now, without a premium account, we received 963 base experience points. Not doubled, not nothing. And a very healthy gross of 39,556 credits. Mastery badges are awarded for levels of mastery in controlling an armored vehicle. Uh, this time around, we've got a first class mastery badge. Very good. To qualify, a player must earn more experience in a battle than the average highest experience of 95% of players who have fought in this vehicle for the previous seven days. And under the battle results statistics tab, we can see that we fired 15 shots, 12 direct hits, 12 penetrations. We damaged uh, 5 enemies and destroyed 3 of them, causing 2,232 points of damage. Uh, damage caused with our assistance was a further 457 points. We received 2 hits, 1 did penetrate, 1 did no damage whatsoever. And the credits tab shows that we grossed 39,556 credits. To repair our vehicle, we did spend 1,659 credits. And the ammunition cost more than repairs this time at 3,780 credits. Also, our consumables, 4,900 credits. And, well, that's okay. It's the good stuff we're running. And, you know, all this leaves us a pretty nice net of 29,217 credits. And last but certainly not least... The XP tab, showing that we received 963 base XP and our good old stack them up, save them for later free XP. 48 points, very nice. And now we're going to start our uh, armor inspector sequence here, where we are going to have a look at the VK 30.01P from the perspective of all of the other tier 6 mediums with their top guns. So why don't we start here with, uh, with the Cromwell. Cromwell's uh, 75mm high-velocity gun has piercing power of 145mm, and you can see the front of the 3001P is no match for its gun, neither are the sides. You get the angle here, you'll see the red coming down the tracks, so there's your side scraping angle there. Note the, uh, the rear of the tank it offers no resistance to this gun either. The tracks again, pretty good angle for track. Uh, Side scraping, sorry. And on the side shows really no no hesitation to allowing the shell through. And you can see like right even sharp angles, the front plates are going to allow that shell through. So this gun has uh, no real issues penetrating 3001 P at all. So now I think we'll move on to the tier six American medium, the Easy 8. And with its uh, 6 76 millimeter gun again you can see the front a little bit on the gun mantlet there is offering resistance but pretty much nothing everything else is easily penetrated now let's see the red angle here for our side scrape well, it's a little sharper yeah something like that nothing on the rear to resist okay reverse side scrape <laughs> not so much sides yeah wide open now you can see those plates coming in but uh yeah, Commander's Capola also easily penetrated. Not much happening there. Let's move on to the Russian Tier 6, the Tier 30 T-34 or 85 with its 85mm gun. Now, again, not much resistance. Uh, it's got even a little bit better activity than the American one there. Good side scraping angle, not bad. Sides, of course, no, no resistance there whatsoever. Uh, yeah, watching the turret come around. There's the tracks for side scraping. No resistance at the rear. Side scraping angle, side scraping angle is pretty good actually against that gun. Nothing on the sides for resistance. And then we're looking at the front again and yeah, easily penetrated by this gun as well. What we're going to do is have a look at what the, the uh, 3001 P sees when it looks at each of these other tier 6 mediums. So we'll start uh, by choosing the uh, 3001P and its 88mm L56 and then we'll go and back here and choose the Cromwell and have a look at what that shows up as. Ah, as you can tell, 
wide open to the 88 millimeter. Uh, there is a bit of a side scraper angle there. Um, yeah, little or no resistance. I mean, the Cromwell is not known for being a well armored tank. It's a speedy, speedy tank with a good gun. No resistance at the rear. Sides, of course, nothing there. And you can see that the front, the front plates coming in at even an extreme angle, easily penetrated by the 88. Now let's uh, move on to the American, the uh, Easy 8 Sherman. Let's see what we have here. Yep, pretty wide open except for the gun mantlet on the front, a little bit on the down by the transmission down there. Uh, the sides, no resistance whatsoever. The rear, no resistance. There's a good, not a bad side scraping angle here. Not bad. And get some done there. Big treads, they're eating it up. And of course, head on to the sides. Our angle changes, new resistance. And look at that top plate there. Yep, pretty extreme angle. It becomes penetrable. Transmission housing. Transfer just in the middle of that strip. That's kind of a hard target to hit at some points. The rest is uh, quite resistive. Now, let's go to uh, check out the Russian T34. Oh, wait a minute. There is another German tier 6 medium here we haven't looked at, and that is the 3002M. Yes, let's have a look at him. Okay, so he offers no resistance to the 88mm barely at all. Gun mantle a bit, certain angles. We have for side scrape. Eh, even the side scraping is not fantastic. Size, no resistance. You can do a little side scraping, but basically, nope. No resistance to the 88 whatsoever. Let's move on to the T3485, the Russian. Now, what do we have here? Okay, so a little around the gun mantlet. There's not much head on on the turret, the front of the hull plate wide open to the gun. Sides, no resistance. How about a side scraping angle here? Bring that in. You can see the rear plates open up very quickly, even at extreme angles. Now, the treads, yeah, we could do a little bit of side scraping here. The rear, wow, what an angle before that. Uh, Turns red side again, not much. Yeah, you can see the front plate, even in extreme angles, now becoming green. Yeah, you, you can't really angle this tank against the 88 millimeter and hope to survive it. Okay. Well, that was certainly very interesting. Yeah. Yep. Just, just no Commander Scopola there too. Big, uh, wide open spot for us. Now, what we're going to do is switch over to the, uh, back to the 3001P, and we're going to show you where the modules are, and uh, so you know where to start shooting, where the crew members are, and where the modules are. Okay, we'll use the, the British 75mm high velocity gun as our example. Since nobody had any real problem getting through the plates. Now you can see the transmission down there. You can see the two gentlemen sitting behind it. And yeah, you can kind of see one of the crew members through the turret there, the commander's head through the cupola. And we got something down the left side through that cheek. Let's kind of rotate over that way and see. Oh, I think that's the radio. Okay, so there's radio. And behind that is the ammo rack. And behind that we have engines and fuel tanks. Yeah, you can see where the uh, you have opportunity to hit all of these modules from quite a few angles. Okay, yeah, there we now we're gonna see you can see those two crew members through the back of the turret. You see those two fuel tanks and the engine. Another ammo rack there on the side. Now you can see the driver crew member. Yeah, big ammo rack. Crew members, all the crew members in the turret. And finally, again, the transmission. Yeah, very accessible, all these uh, items. <laughs> but I think, yeah, well, there you go. There's Armor Inspector. Don't forget to pick that up from your App Store or your uh, Google Play or whatever Android store. It's a great app. Well, folks, that's our look at the 3001P German Tier 6 Medium. Um, you know, on paper, it doesn't look like much. It, um doesn't bounce a lot of shots, you know, off the top of the turret sometimes you do side, but the whole, not a lot. Um, now I've run that through my uh, spreadsheet analysis like I did for the tier 7 heavies. Anybody wants that sheet, uh, feel free to email me and let me know. Um, yeah, although, you know, 
I have done all right with this tank. It's not an easy tank to win with, but um, I don't mind it. I don't hate this tank. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but I don't hate it. Um, I probably won't keep it moving on past it, but uh, yeah, I, th I think it's all right. Even though uh, with my spreadsheet analysis, it came in a dismal fourth place. Uh, only the Easy H showed a lower score after running it through the spreadsheet than the uh, 3001P. But hey, you know, it, it's all in how you play it. I think that's uh, where we're going to cut this video off today. Um, if you like this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up underneath. That would be great. And if you really like these videos, why not subscribe? You'll get a notice every time I put a new video up. That way you don't miss out on the new content. All right, folks, thanks very much for coming by and watching. I'll catch you next time.